So, uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Um, another uh, ch cute session, Champions Using Teams Effectively. We're here for you. If you came with a question to talk about, we're happy to talk about it. We're also happy to come up with other stuff to talk about. But again, this is just for folks that want to geek out on teams, but also, you know, as the name implies, you know, how can we learn best practices and use teams effectively? I think this is episode 31. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've been doing this a while. And I say that because, you know, for anyone that's either on, online now or watching uh, on demand, there's a growing library there of, of pretty good stuff. And um, also a lot of it specific to government. So that was something I was telling someone else. Uh, I'm sure everybody's got, you know, uh, sessions for teams, but we know hearing from customers that the government specific uh, content sometimes can be lacking. So this, I think, is one of the um, few, at least video, you know, based uh, uh, areas uh, where you're going to find that that government specific content. Of course, big plug for tech community public sector blog um, right. when you're talking about you know the written word that's a, a great uh, resource there that is uh, government specific so maybe between the two between you know these these videos and and that blog you can stay up to date on all things government and teams and you know everything else so good stuff um, so yeah so got myself Ricardo Wilkins got Stacy. We also have Nash. He may or may not be joining us today, um, but but basically three folks that really like teams. And, and of course, we do it for our job as well. Um, but we like to come every week and just talk it up. So um, with that, I mean, we can d jump right in if anybody came with a question or has something on their mind to kick off our, our little 30 minute conversation here. Um, certainly, you can use the chat or come off mute um, to ask a question. If not, we always have stuff to talk about. Well, I'm curious for our audience here today if you've used Whiteboard in Teams this week because mm -hmm. there was quite a leap in the feature set that you're allowed to use in any and every Microsoft Cloud. Uh, and I was thrilled to see it in my government tenant. So I'm excited that you have those same tools now. It was a mega, mega leap. Wouldn't you agree, Ricardo? Yeah, nice little UI refresh. Um, yeah. I even feel like I know Jim in the in the past, you'd ask some things about like shapes in, in teams and whatnot. I, I mean, uh, in whiteboard, I think maybe some of those, uh, some of the challenges you may have been having whiteboard in the past might be addressed with the new UI. I don't know if you've tried it, but definitely some good stuff there. I'm gonna put it in the, in the uh, chat, a link. Now this is a specific to Surface Duo, but I did try to show the new UI using my Surface Duo, but it will still give you a little feel for, um, you know, what that new UI is that, that we're talking about. Did you say Surface Duo? I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, if you aren't aware, Microsoft makes a phone now. And uh, I've been carrying it for about a year and they've just come out with the second version that I think is going to drop at the end of October. But there's really good deals on this Surface Duo right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it is it's a phenomenal um, two screen device and Ricardo and I geek out on that too all the time. So check it out if you haven't heard of it. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, you got a question out there? I do. I love the new whiteboarding features. They are awesome. Um, sizing of templates. So, you know, when they first come on, they're really small. And what we've learned is that, you know, they're tiny. So before a meeting, you put the template out there, you size it the way you want it, stop sharing. And then when you go back, the template's like the size that you want it to be. But is there a quick way to get those things a little bigger? Right now, we're just using our mouse and scrolling because they're pretty tiny. <laughs> At least for us. This is the, the templates that start off your whiteboard session? Yeah, yeah. And we've got a workaround that works really well. But, hmm. um, what, what's your workaround? Just to make it the size we want and exit out of the meeting and then, or exit, you know, stop presenting and then going back. So yeah. It's just they're really tiny when you first put them out there. And then if you have a lot of stuff on your whiteboard, they're really tiny. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't tried that myself. Okay. I just start with white, with just a white. 
And yeah, I love the I love the backgrounds that you can change colors and the lines and the grids. Like it's just amazing. It's like you know Dorothy opening her door in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Yeah, I was just tinkering with that as well. I had not attempted the resize the template. So you're, I'm curious. I'll, I'll learn from you about the resizing. So you. When you're talking about it in the meeting context, you add the whiteboard app, then you add your template, and then you have to leave the meeting? So we start the meeting, we share the whiteboard, add the template, and then what we've been doing is um, we use our scroll wheel, you need to click up the side of the template to make the whiteboard space bigger. And then we've noticed if we stop sharing the whiteboard and then we reshare the whiteboard, then it's, um, the size it's a workable size okay so you're actually zooming in on zooming it. yes so that okay. everybody can see the zoom okay because you can't click and drag and make it bigger right i was just trying to do a couple of things um here that i'm sure you've tried all of it was no also <laughs> selected and see what i could do but yeah i see now Hmm. Well, I like your Zoom feature. I like your Zoom. I think that's a great idea. Right. Like this is tiny. So, mm. you know, but if you kind of click to the side and Zoom because it doesn't resize, you know. And then what we found, once you have it the way you want it to be, if you stop and then go back, it'll be that size that you left it. And everybody can see the size that you left it too. So. So, so like you, you zoom in like this to try to get it big. Yeah. Okay. And then you stop presenting. Yeah. And uh, then um, when you go uh, back, and yeah. And then when you go back to present again, it should. Please don't make me a liar. <laughs> it should be the side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's the workaround we found. Hmm. Just so you don't have 10 people. It's too little, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I like your workaround. I can see how that's effective. Um, I will tinker some myself. And if I come up with a new way, I'll mention it in the future weeks. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Jim, good question. I think, I think what what we are able to replicate and i'll have to do a little testing but if you zoom in um using her scroll wheel or uh, just stroking up the right side of the template then when you uh, are sharing your whiteboard app it will stay zoomed in for everyone oh okay so That's she's true. doing that as in the role of the presenter right but an individual in the group, if they say they had some visual issues or something, if they needed to make it larger, they could they could enhance or zoom in their own version of that to see. Or if they wanted to go over to the, the far right of that to put their comments in there, they'd be able to independently control their view, right? So I wonder if we need we would need to user side by side to really demonstrate this i guess right because that's the crux of this is what the organizers doing versus the end user seeing is that what we're saying yeah I so. yeah. yeah i think i think jim is um trying to get at a use case where a participant in the meeting where the whiteboard is being shared could control their own individual view of that whiteboard and i think it's whether it's shared in the meeting um in the meeting window or not is the what will have to be determined in order to, in order to make his use case work because i know they can manipulate the whiteboard um in their own view if they you know log back into the whiteboard uh at another time and then change it of course but I'm not sure if it's being shared during the meeting, if they would be able to have their own. Actually, you're doing it. You're Zooming, right? Yeah, everybody seems to have their own Zoom. They're doing it separately, good. 
but you start with the template expanded, right? And and then everyone starts from the same point, but they can customize their view from there. So good, exactly. Jim, we got it. So then if I, so I'm all zoomed into this uh, sticky here. So if I stop, um, does that mean when it comes back, everybody zoomed into that sticky? Is that how that works? Where's my stop actually? There we go. So we're gone and then I try it again. Well, it kind of just reset. Actually. It started back where you um, where you started from yeah. originally when you shared it. OK, interesting concept. This this idea of controlling the zoom or the pre pre presentation of that whiteboard. I do love the real time collaboration now. Yeah, cool. me too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just think whiteboard is amazing. It's going to take um, me some practice to be uh, proficient in a way that I feel like is helpful <laughs> in my meetings. But I know um, standing at a whiteboard, I just love being able to replicate that. Indeed. Um, I owe Jim something and while you're sharing your screen Ricardo maybe you can help with this Jim had some questions about his OneDrive and his files and teams and having um, perhaps even power automate do some copying of files from teams to OneDrive and I attempted to answer an email and I think it was lost a little bit in translation but if you will click on your files app on the left rail. Yes. So Jim, this is what I was referring to that you have a view in Teams of your recent Teams files and OneDrive in one place. That's uh, I think you were I think we were talking about two separate places because you were looking at perhaps a channel and the files tab versus the files app on the left rail. And those are definitely two different experiences, even though they have a similar name. The scope is different. Yep, I can see that now. I, and I don't know why I didn't see that over on the side. I was so fixated up on the top. Um, but but really the use case that I was trying to, to um, articulate was that in our central office, they are developing a packet for this event and they have a team that they put the packet into. So that in and of itself is a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But now it's a matter of taking it from that team that has a somewhat limited and constricted access mm -hmm. and then cascading it down throughout the organization. And oh. In our region, we would really like to be able to give the participant an electronic version ahead of time. And if they want to print it, then they can. Okay. But we would prefer to not have to go through, you know, the printing kind of thing. So it really becomes an accessibility thing. The other issue is that the, the time frame, which a final copy is actually approved, has really cut the window down to like the night before. So coming up with an automated way for it to cascade out to everybody that we say should need this would be the ideal solution. If I'm understanding it right, this may be something that I've actually I've got a blog post on that I probably can't find in time. But um, <laughs> if I'm hearing you right, you're putting something in teams where the visibility is uh, you know, maybe just to the team, but you need to give it additional visibility to people maybe outside of the team for some upcoming meeting or something like that. Yes. OK. If, if, if I've got it, you got it right. I mean, what I talk about in a blog is the fact that, again, these these files are SharePoint backed and and yes, by default, the permissions are set to the people in the team, but you still got all the power of good old SharePoint uh, for changing permissions. And one option could be for instance, a new folder in this team that maybe I would call this 
you know, publicly shared or something. I probably wouldn't call it that, but, <laughs> um, and so that nap, that folder's in this team's files area. It has inherited the, the permissions of everyone else, which is show the people in the team, but I can go and manage access. I can start removing people. I can start adding new people. I can, uh, you know, so if you've got a, you know, a list of folks that need this, they can be added here and it would be just for that folder. They, those people would have no concept or, or visibility of any other file. They would just see this folder and any of its contents. So, um, you know, if this was something you were doing on a regular basis, maybe make a folder today, you know, with this permission. And now the understanding is any files I put in that folder are ones that, you know, uh, the, you know, other people outside the team have access to. Yeah. yeah. We, we, I've seen that done with teams even internally where yes, we, uh, created some content or assets for a team, but we really want to share it with uh, the whole, you know, or organization or, or our business unit or whatever. Uh, no need to make a new location somewhere. Let's just, you know, dedicate this folder to a different set of permissions and now start sharing that out broadly. And so now people out in the business unit are looking in our team's files area, but only seeing that folder and those files. Just everything else has still got the same protections that we want. It's still you know, just for the members of the team. Is that kind of, you know, what you're what you're thinking about there? It, it well, I, I did what you just said using my OneDrive and I shared that permission. So I, I copied manually the, the contents of the folder from the team's environment into a folder in my OneDrive, permissioned it the way that you said. OK, what I'm looking for is um, well, first of all, can that be done? Can the permissioning be done with the folder from within Teams if you go down right. to the SharePoint site? Yes. That's that's just that's what I'm doing here. Okay. So I'm, no OneDrive is in the picture. This is a team, a private Teams uh, file area, but I'm going to make this folder in that private area, and I'm going to make the folder not private anymore. Still okay. keep privacy on everything else, but now that folder and its contents get a, a broader sharing that I can share, you know, share that link with, with others. Okay, so I don't yes, have to that's very around. helpful. Yeah. Is there a to way though to, to somehow, and I was thinking it might be through Power Automate, but, but I don't know if there's a change in the parent folder in the more restricted team, is there a way to um, use any change in a file within that folder as a trigger to be able to copy that to a different folder in another team. First off, I'll say, you know, when I when I change the permissions on this folder, it is now brought it breaks in its inheritance from that from the rest. So um, in this case, that's probably a good thing. Whatever I'm doing, whatever the team's doing in their normal operations isn't going to affect this public sharing. Some ways it could be bad because now things, you know, that you're trying to float flow down aren't aren't going to affect it. it. It has decided to stop listening to the parent uh, permissions. So in your case, um, if you're, I guess this this model works. I think if you kind of commit to using that folder for all files that'll be publicly shared. So if there is some new file created that you know you want to share, just move it into that folder. Um, as opposed to what I think I'm hearing you say is, you know, new file that needs to be shared is created. Can we automatically either, I don't know, share it out or, or move it or something like that? Um, I mean, that would take a little more work, but, you know, maybe, you know, just understanding that we've got a, sh a shared location, put your shared stuff there might be the, the simple approach. Okay. I think using Power Automate and I, I'm, fairly certain i know the answer to this ricardo and i can uh, bounce off each other on this one but i think that because you have triggers in your sharepoint metadata when you edit a file couldn't you theoretically tell power automate to move your working document to the publicly shared folder when it's updated so that you always have one version of that file, whether you're looking in the publicly one, public one or the Teams that, one, just that, to make sure they don't get out of sync. I suspect you could. I, I would just be careful with that. Um, 
you know, because again, it needs everybody on the team to be in sync. If I if I touch right. this file, something's on the background's it, going to move going it live. to, a, to yeah. A, yeah, it's going live. <clears throat> so, to, <clears throat> sorry, Good to point. me, the, this that, this idea of just let's agree when you're when this is ready to go live, move it here is a, a little makes what make me feel a little better, you know. Yeah, no, I I think you're right. Um, or well, even but, an explicit checkbox, you know, if you're looking at the files in the SharePoint library, a column that says, you know, go live and I I consciously mm -hmm. click it and then it something happens in the background mm -hmm. would feel make me feel a little better than if True. I, you know, to turn a lowercase t to a capital T, boom, this thing's getting published, you know. Yeah. I like that. OK, and, so and, so Jim, if you if you want to tinker with that, I mean, I can I can get under the hood and um, power automate with you, especially if you follow Ricardo's advice, which is to add that additional column that says ready for publishing. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no. And you don't move it until it is. Uh, I or, may have somebody from up there reach out to you um, okay. to do that because it's really it's it's their project. I, I'm the uh, inheritor of the content that they produce so okay. um you are being able to show them how to do that i think would give them a whole lot more uh sense of control over the process um and probably facilitate the buy-in so that would be great okay and glenn i think after you asked ricardo showed again but do you need us to show you again really quickly how to access that sharepoint file library from teams uh, no, I saw that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Good. I think this is the blog post I was talking about. I'll put this in the chat as well. Uh, not yeah, by not so invisible files. I'm meaning, you know, uh, normally these files are invisible to people, but we can uh, change that. I think that's what this is about. <laughs> if I pick the right one. Yeah. So yeah, I, I always try to mention that though, especially for those who have come up in the SharePoint world. Not, not all the things you spent years learning about SharePoint, luckily they still apply um, while Teams tries to simplify a lot of that for you. Um, and in many ways, many teams can ignore the fact that SharePoint is there for, for you know, for good benefit. Technically, it is still there one, you know, little click, click button away and go back to, to your um, using your own methods for um, managing files. Um, and that and that, of course, is down to the file level, right? We we were here talking. Oops, let's see where was I? We were talking about. Uh, I've lost my the tab I was in. Oh, we were talking about you know a, a new folder here, or, or doing it folder based. But those permissions can happen at the file level. So maybe everything in this uh, files area should be for the team except this one. You know, C dot policies document, and we can change the permissions on that. It, breaks inheritance, it's publicly available, um, and and all the person, you know, with that link would be able to see is that file. And same with this folder. I don't know if you've ever experienced getting a link to some folder that has been done this way, but that out, outside person basically just sees the folder, all, all of these links on the side go away. They, they don't have any concept of there being other content there. They just see the content you've given them permission to so it works out works out pretty well and and again that's a live uh link so if you start updating documents there um they'll see those that's actually one workaround as you have meetings with external parties where we all know the the uh upload button in our chat goes away once you get a bunch of external parties and that's probably for good reason too so now how do i do how do i share or work on files with those folks uh, having a, a link like this that I can put in the chat gives everybody a cloud location, right? That's now um, able to be, you know, opened and edited and, and all that good stuff. So a couple, you know, a couple more steps. You, we'd love to just have a upload button in the chat, but again, if it's external parties there, at least putting a link to a cloud location where they can see the files um, is is one workaround. Right. Good stuff. I yeah, I always love talking about files and teams because it does let me go back to talking about SharePoint, which is which has been my bread and butter for about ten years. So, 
Yeah. Well, Jim's going to love that because he's looking for um, having an overview of those permission levels in SharePoint and how to apply those and uh, understand that moderator moderator level permission and and how um, how he can use that in his teams. And I think yeah. that that would be a good topic for the future. Let's put yeah. that in our one note. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, if everybody can, if you if you guys like that idea, maybe thumbs up on Jim's uh, uh, post there in the chat. Um, can definitely make that for a future session. Any other? We got about three, three, four minutes left. Any other questions? Uh, anybody had burning on their heart? Uh, yeah, th <laughs> this is Glenn. I'm so yeah. glad that you have a SharePoint background. You know, we have Teams 365 in our organization. We're just now transit starting to transition from the previous version of SharePoint to SharePoint 365. Mm -hmm. So I haven't. I saw on your screen that SharePoint 365. Just I know we have only a couple of minutes. Can you just give us a few, you know, high points of um, how SharePoint 365 is interacting with Teams 365? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it sounds like you may be transitioning from what we, what we would say like a SharePoint on-premises, maybe yes. to SharePoint online, right? right? Yes, and so you're right. Teams, uh, I always like to say Teams doesn't, there's no Teams files, like Teams doesn't have its own files structure. Teams just borrows from its buddy SharePoint to handle files. So team, Teams gives a nice button to the files and really kind of hides the SharePointiness of them. But essentially, these are files that are managed by Teams. And so that's why this button here is, is nice. And again, it's, it's nice that um, it does hide it because for your typical team, hey, I just need to see the file, open the file, edit the file. I don't need to care about all of the SharePointy stuff. But for those of us that do love the SharePoint stuff, then yes, that that SharePoint is there and it is the back end. What uh, it, it tends to want to do is basically just make a folder for every channel that gets created in the team. Right. That's that's the basis of its organization it doesn't try to get fancier than that. So you'll see as I kind of go to the root of uh, this team's documents, I'm just seeing a folder that matches every channel in the team. Um, from that point, you've got documents in there that essentially have the permissions of everybody in the team can view and edit them. That is the default. So that's that's great in that it takes away the pain we used to have of, hey, I'm trying to share this file with you. Hey, do you have access? Of, you know, let me go change, blah, blah, blah. If we're working in a team, I know that you have view and edit access to it. That's the default permission. Um, so yeah, so going to this SharePoint site, hitting documents if it's a SharePoint site related to a team or basically teams has created this site you know when the team was created then that documents link will go to those uh, to those doc to those folders and um, and that's where uh, you, you you can manage them and by managing I'm meaning everything from you know new uh, library uh, new columns in this library workflows I mean all the things that you um, may have come to expect from SharePoint you know would be there. Uh, if you're coming going from on-prem to SharePoint online, there's some new experiences you'll uh, probably be happy to uh, start to get to know um, that can help you uh, with your teams as well. So, so you've got some some new things to explore just from coming from an older on-prem version of SharePoint. Uh, but in general, yes, SharePoint plays very nicely with Teams, and and essentially does the heavy lifting related to files for Teams. Meanwhile, Teams just tries to make it easy to see those files in, in one click, either the files tab or the files button on the left rail. So that's kind of the 30, you know, like the 30 second version of that. But I, I agree, uh, a future future session where we dive a little deeper than that, maybe uh, I see a lot of thumbs up on, on Jim's uh, yeah. post for that. So sounds like that will work. Awesome. Yeah. Great questions today. Yeah. So hopefully this was a good time uh, spent for you all. Um, we'll be here next week as well. We'll keep it going. We'll probably plan to talk about files um, as well. Like like uh, Stacey was saying, we'll put it in our notes here. And um, we'll keep it going next week. So this uh, session will be on the uh, YouTube channel. And um, you can uh, rewatch and watch uh, previous sessions as well. So glad to see everybody. And uh, have a good day and a good weekend. Thanks, guys. Bye, Ricardo. Thank you. Bye.